Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up a basic spawner script so that you can create game objects on your screen. Basically, this could be enemies, um, projectiles, or just about anything you want to create on demand. And in this case, we'll be implementing the spawner with a left mouse button click. So the setup for this is relatively simple. What you should have is a game object that you're going to want to duplicate. You can create that in your scene. But ultimately where it should end up is as a prefab object in your project. If you don't already know what a prefab is, it's basically where you take anything in the hierarchy, which is going to be a game object, uh, put that in your assets folder, and then that can be referenced from your scripts. When it exists inside of your assets folder, uh, we call it a prefab, which is basically a default set of values and scripts that will all be attached to a game object that you can instantiate or to create a copy of inside of your game when you need to. For right now, I'm gonna delete this old prefab and we'll just recreate the prefab by dragging it into the assets folder. You can see that I've created a subdirectory called prefabs. Uh, that's just for organizational purposes. It can actually exist anywhere in your assets folder. So all you have to do is literally drag it from the hierarchy into one of your folders and then that will create the prefab. Now, as for your game object itself, you can have pretty much whatever you want attached to it. In this case, I have a sprite renderer, a default box collider, and a rigid body. The only difference that I've changed is that the gravity scale has been set to zero so that gravity does not affect this object. Basically, it won't go downwards when the game starts. Now, how do we actually instantiate this prefab, copy it to the scene over and over again? Well, I've created a extra script called spawner and this of course takes a game object since i deleted the old prefab we need to add this back in so i'm going to do that here and the spawner script can exist anywhere inside of your game scene it does not need to be attached to the default event system or anything it just needs to be on some game object when your scene starts so i'm going to go ahead and edit this script and i'll show you guys what's happening here so the first thing we need to do is take a public game object you can call this enemy or whatever, but it's going to be the object to spawn. So when we're talking about a game object, we're talking about one of these items that will exist inside of the game scene. You can see that they all have transforms, no matter what other extra scripts are attached to it, but they can have extra components and custom scripts to go along with it to define what it can do and how it interacts with the scene, such as box colliders and rigid body 2Ds. So next we need a spawn method. So for me, I created public void spawn vector three position. Uh, it has no return type, but it takes a position as an input type. Basically, this is gonna be the location where you want the game object to spawn. So in order to create it with any mono behavior script, you can call this method instantiate, which will create a game object of the type you pass in. So this is a game object enemy and it's going to create a copy of that game object with all of the defaults that we have inside of the inspector for the prefab so by default it would be position zero 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 because that's what the prefab says but you'll notice that there's a dot transform dot position equals position part added on to the instantiate call so what i'm doing here is once this object is created with instantiate this returns a game object so we're basically doing the game object dot transform so we're getting the transform component that's where you control the position rotation scale and taking the position of that that's the xyz coordinates and assigning it to the position we passed into the spawn method so what this means is that the position of the new game object that we instantiate is going to be equal to the position we passed in for this method. So the only thing you need on top of that is to have some kind of event to create that game object. In this case, on the update method of the script, I'm checking for if input get dot get key down is equal to key code mouse one, that's left mouse button. Then we'll basically get the position we want to spawn the enemy at and go ahead and call the spawn method. So in this case, one way you can get a position is to do camera.main.screenworld to point. So what camera.main.screenworld to point is going to do is we take a position on the screen 
which is the mouse position. Um, now the mouse position by default, it's referring to basically the canvas coordinates or the pixel coordinates on the screen, not the actual game coordinates. But with screen to world point, we can take a position on the screen and convert it into a point within the game world. In this game, wherever the mouse is located when we click, it's going to be converting that into a position that's compatible with these transform positions. And we of course call this on the main camera, assuming that the main camera is the one that you're showing to the player uh, when the game's actually running. That would be your default camera here. So by doing that, we calculate the position of the mouse in terms of game coordinates. But there's one thing to note about that, which is that the camera position also has a Z position of negative 10. And if you just get this world point, it's going to also have the Z position of negative 10. And that would be bad for a 2D game because if the Z position is the same as the camera, you're not gonna be able to actually see uh, the game objects. The game objects need to be in front of the camera. So for that reason, uh, I have made an adjustment to the world point, basically same X coordinate, same Y coordinate, but we take the transform of the prefab, the enemy uh, spawnable game object up here, and we just take that Z position and we make that the new Z position of this adjust Z vector. So that's gonna be a zero there. So it's gonna be the position of the mouse in terms of X and Y, but then the Z position of zero of the enemy prefab. So by making those adjustments, we can just pass in that position into spawn and be able to create the game object. Essentially, wherever we click on the screen with the left mouse button, that's where the enemy is going to spawn. So if we go ahead and hit play here, we can demonstrate that once again. So we obviously have this default game object left in the screen, but wherever I click, that is where a new game object is created. And you can see because of the components attached to it, like a dynamic rigid body, it's able to interact in terms of a physics engine, which is pretty cool. Now, just to point out again, it doesn't need to be an enemy that you're spawning with this method. It can be literally any game object. So if you have a projectile, which is its own game object, if you have a player that you want to spawn, you can do all of that with the instantiate method. So it's very useful whenever you want to copy a prefab with default settings to your scene, and then you can just change the position on where you're creating it and anything else you need to update before it finally gets added to the scene. So that's gonna be it for this video on how to instantiate or create game objects using simple scripting inside of Unity. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.